Hey, I gotta talk to you or else I'm gonna fall asleep on the drive home. So, we're just a... Two and a half hours from final two days of uh, Passover. These are holy days. And uh, so I have to stay away from the computer, stay away from live streaming, stay away from our conversations. Have to stay in my lane off the roads. Oh man, we had some intense streams last night and uh, it's hard to come down and then go to sleep right after uh, those, those streams. So, and I, I like to get up early. I get up about 5, 5.30 a.m. And uh, for me, it's really important to have a, a disciplined start to my day because the morning's the rudder of the day. So I get up at 5.35 a.m. and I immediately turn on my sun lamp because I'm working inside almost all the time. So I don't get enough sun. And it's good for the, the biorhythms, I believe, to, uh, to get that early morning, you know, high intensity light and it wakes the body up. And then I take my modafinil, which also wakes me up. And uh, come on, go, go, go. What's the deal? Come on. I'm trying to be talking about that jerk in front of me is just driving way too slow. I'm trying to trying to show some moral leadership here and I'm annoyed by these drivers. Okay, let's get the show on the road, guys. Addicted to streaming. Now I can quit at any time. Let me use it to enhance my life and to shine the light of Torah into the darkest recesses of the internet. Okay, this is mine, this is mine, I got the right of way. So, let me tell you back to the spirituality, which is where you tune in, right? So, got, the, got my modafinil, I got my high, you know, high intensity morning light machine, um, stumble to the shower i take a big spoonful come on let come on you guys come on go oh, come on oh you could have gone come on it's a lady driver bloody hell and that's some kind of crucifix that she's got hanging from her <sighs> but i'm not going to stereotype about lady christian drivers uh oh it's a black guy <laughs> whoops I better be careful. I do not honk at black, black guys. I do not want, do not want anyone like accosting me, <laughs> pulling out a gun or just giving me a stern talking to. Don't want to receive anybody's road rage. Okay, so uh, and take a big mouthful of stay in my lane. Yeah, take a big mouthful coconut oil first thing in the morning then I, I jump into the shower and I make sure the water is fully cold nothing but cold and then I, I take a breath hold my breath and just force myself in front of that stream of nothing but cold water come on come on I gotta wait for an illegal immigrant to cross the street here and uh and so that cold stream that really wakes me up combined with the modafinil so i i uh, first of all i get it on my face and I, I try to like scrub off the the gum from the from the nasal expander that, that i wear every night to uh, minimize my snoring and improve the the quality of the my oxygen intake and of my breath now i could change lanes here and get ahead of two cars, but 
I'm not. Everyone is aware this is a deep journey thing, right? A convert Jew gets in close with the alt right, it's leading to a book. I am just here to share love and inclusion Talmud style. I am just a humble servant of the pure truth of the Torah, the pure love. That's what we're doing here on this channel. Nothing but pure love and inclusion. Now we got some Mexican guy with his shirt off gesticulating wildly at the bus stop. There are a lot of wackos at that bus stop, a lot of drunks. My God, the quality of life in Los Angeles just continually deteriorates. The place becomes more like Mexico every day. Come on, buddy. Man, this woman just tried to pull in front of me. Did she know who she was messing with? Okay, so I, I, uh, I get about 30 seconds or so cold water first thing in the morning on my front and another 30 seconds or so on my back. Then I am wide awake. I'm wide awake about two seconds after my cold shower starts. Up at 5.35, I'm usually out of the shower, dried off, in my room, getting changed by 40 a.m. Got that high intensity sun lamp shining in my eyes. So I uh, get dressed, nice professional dress. For some high quality work. Take my supplements. Uh, drink my protein shake. Drink my uh, pure green vegetable juice with no fruit juice, no sugar, just a mixture of a whole bunch of different vegetables. And then at about 5.50, I'm out the door and I'm on the phone with my 12-step uh, my phone meeting and just some really high quality shares over the next 35 minutes. Like that's how I start my day. So, one thing I learned from this morning's 12-step phone meeting was think about when you're starting your day and perhaps you're in a, doing your meditation, think about what does God want for you for today? What does God want you to accomplish? And uh, if, yeah, if I was an Uber driver, would you ride with me? I'll ride with you, bro. So. The normal thing is, of course, to think, what do I want to accomplish today? Or even the normal thing is to not even plan, to just act on habit. And uh, thanks, Acid Prophecy. So it's important whenever the, the traffic comes to a halt that you have your, your grip strengtheners, your Digiflex 9 pound. God wants you to secure the 14 words. We must secure the existence of our people and and a safe future for white children, okay? And for Jewish children, black children, nothing, you know, Mexican children, nothing but love and inclusion on this channel. So ask yourself when you start your day. So many people don't even really plan, they just stumble through. But failing to plan is planning to fail. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I'm too distracted. I'm tired, I'm not, not at my best. Yeah, keep my hand on the steering wheel, okay. So, worst thing is no planning at all. Yeah, I'm off to do another hit job for the Jewish Mafia, but let's just keep that between us, okay? So I'm getting ready to just like squeeze the life out of another enemy of Israel. Just like in one of those early Soprano episodes. Um, in between dropping off some donations at local yeshivas. So the alternative to not planning is to planning your day, okay? And first things first, because you lose willpower as the day goes on. I accomplish the most difficult part of my day before 5.40 a.m. It's the first thing I do basically is get in that cold shower and pretty much everything is easier from then on than that cold shower. I mean, particularly in winter, that really wakes me up. And so, Instead of just like having a list for yourself of what you want to accomplish that day, that's a good thing. It's good to plan 
and to tackle first things first. Tackle the most important, not the most pressing, but the most important things first when you've got the most willpower. And then as you make progress, you'll feel better and better. You'll get, gain in strength and in self-esteem. But if you take the time to pray, take the time to pray and, and then meditate and then ask yourself, what does God want? for me to accomplish today. I'll tell you why this helps me. Because, okay, if you, you basically, you just asking me what I want. I want like sex, I want love, I want, I want attention. I want, like I want to forge like intense emotional connections with attractive high achieving people. I want to ingratiate myself with the powerful. I want to, you know, get more and more for myself. And, uh, like, that's what I want. But guess what? When I, when I go after what I want, I step on the toes of other people. I alienate myself from others. I don't do good quality work. For instance, I'm an Alexander Technique teacher. So 80% of my clients are highly attractive young women. I mean, I've, I've worked with supermodels who are 10 out of 10. Okay, I've worked with actresses who you'd say are 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. And so if I, if I get out of, if I get out of spiritual alignment, like just imagine I once like say something wrong with a female client, like the word just gets out you know, my reputation as an Alexander Technique teacher is just shot. So, I've never had that problem. Like, obviously, in the past, I've had problems in the sex and love arena. But when it comes to Alexander Technique, I'm just able to switch into a professional mode, and I don't get out of it. So, I, I'm able to switch into the mode of, I want to be of service to my client. I want to teach them the principles of the Alexander Technique and how they apply in a wide variety of situations so that they can embody the characters that they want to embody so that they can move as smoothly as possible uh, so that they can have more and more control of their body their mind their emotions their thinking and the characters that they want to embody and, and present to the world but if i got off course and i started thinking oh i really want to get with this hot actress or i really want to like you know, rope them in for like a 20 lesson deal you know, for 1500 bucks or you know I wonder if she has a hot friend to set me up with or boy I'd really like to you know, springboard my career by using my connection with this one actress so that I can I can get more jobs on set working with other actors instead of thinking primarily on how I can be of service to the client I'm just gonna get in trouble and I have gotten in trouble in the workplace before, not in the Alexander Technique, but in other areas. I've gotten in a lot of trouble for inappropriate speech, like overly sexualized speech. Uh, I once uh, brought a copy of a movie I directed to the workplace and like shared it around. I once took a copy of the movie to my synagogue and shared it around. I mean, really stupid, stupid things. Uh, oh, you know, numerous times I got caught, like, uh, you know, doing things on the computer I shouldn't be doing. Not porn, but, well, I remember for months I was working on my first book, you know, while I was at work. And they even kind of warned me about it. The, the lady in administration said, don't you have a computer at home where you can work on your own thing? And, and I heard the warning, but I kept doing my own thing. They didn't fire me because I guess I was good at my job, but it, I did definitely get a demerit in my file at my temp agency. So that's why I really need God. I really need 12-step programs. I really need to get my head straight first thing in the morning, not just the supplements, the cold shower and the, the morning light. I need that 12-step meeting kind of orient me to the day. Then I need some meditation time so that I can ask myself, what does God want from me today? Because it's amazing if I just focus I'm being of service to my clients. All the character flaws that have habitually tripped me up over the course of my life and alienated me from other people, such as you know, inappropriate speech, 
like giving my political opinions, religious opinions, cultural opinions, you know, in the workplace. I never talk about sex, politics, religion when I'm teaching Alexander Technique, but frequently in the past, I've done that and alienated myself. There are people in the workplace who would no longer speak to me. Like I would see them for years and they would not speak to me. They just could not get past the time. They were so offended that I said that uh, my rabbi says a Jew should not wish a Christian a Merry Christmas because that's giving Christianity some validity. And another person I, I alienated because I said Jews were good at bargaining. Or I'd love to see you guys you know, ha perfect your haggling skills. And you know, that's real Torah Judaism. And uh, this secular Jew got highly offended basically hasn't spoken to me since. Uh, what are other ways I've gotten in trouble in the workplace? Trying to form like two intense friendships and relationships in the workplace rather than thinking about work or just trying to ingratiate myself with people in power while treating carelessly the people who are below me in social status so that they hate me and then try to trick, trip me up. Uh, so or you know, not really doing my job, but just surfing online when I'm at work, or just trying to get into really long conversations to make the workday pass rather than doing my job. Uh, just being really careless about my job, not paying any attention to what I was doing, not paying any attention to detail. Uh, these are the things that classically trip me up. And uh, particularly when I say, don't like my boss, <sighs> But if I just focus on being of service, it's amazing how these problems just, uh, they just don't, they're not problems anymore. If I'm focusing on the attitude that, you know, I work for God. Come on guys, let's get going. What the heck? If I concentrate that I work for God, come on, what the hell? Then, then it doesn't matter if I like or do not like my boss, if I'm passionate about my work or not passionate, you know, bored to death with my work. You now I'm here to be of service to God's kids. If I can just keep that 12 step attitude going, then I'm much less likely to get in trouble with my habitual character defects of selfishness, self-seeking, inconsideration, dishonesty, fearfulness. Like those are the things that are just habitually tripped me up at work and and left me an, an under owner, an underachiever, uh, someone who got into huge amounts of credit card debt, someone who's continually getting fired. So I managed to pay off all of my credit card debt, but still I'm a 51 year old with, with nothing saved for retirement. And now I'm on a good trajectory and now I'm earning at the six figure level. So I've been paying off about 2K in credit card debt a month off the principal for the past uh, couple of years. So now, now I'm gonna apply that to paying off uh, personal debts to, to people and to saving for retirement and uh, to uh, building a prosperous life so that I can get married and have a family and have children and fulfill the mitzvahs. So, that's it, bye bye.